This week on TGC News, SIG 3D prints a new Shusher, Kimber, CZ, and Trigger Tech have new stuff, and Big Blue showing huge growth. Keltec continues to evolve and innovate with designs like the P17, an ultra-affordable 17-round 22 pistol, or the CP33, a 33-round 22 caliber pistol. How about the KS7 bullpup shotgun? And of course, the RDB lineup continues to grow with the RDB Defender. Keltec keeps pushing the boundaries of what is possible. To learn more, go to keltecweapons.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get cracking, I want to have some fun going into the holidays. If you guys click the secret affiliate link in the description of this video, 50,000 times total before Christmas, that's December 25th, 2020, I will give away a Barrett. I don't mean one of their ARs or something else. I mean a real deal, big boy Barrett. This means you have 18 days to make that happen. Get to it. There will be a running total on our website. Now, how about some news? Sig Sauer has put themselves in a positive light after we talked about the cross rifle recall last week with the Mod X9. What is it? A 3D printed suppressor. Not only that, but it's also modular made of titanium and has one of the most unique exteriors I've seen on any silencer. I love to see more and more brands taking on different types of manufacturing to bring out super interesting products. According to SIG, there are seven different ways to configure this can, ranging from an overall length of 7.75 inches weighing just eight ounces, all the way down to three and a quarter inches weighing five ounces. And I suspect the heaviest portion of that is in the mounting system. Speaking of that, they are actually including a standard half by 28 piston and a 13 and a half by one left hand piston. Most companies only include one, so that's actually pretty cool. Hey Sig, what about doing that with your mags? More mags is always good, right? As far as sound reduction goes, even though that number only tells this much of the story with a suppressor, we'll cover it for this one. According to their data with a P226 using 147 grain ammo, the DB rating at the longest config is 127.4 and increases about three to five DB with every baffle you remove until you get to the non-hearing safe 145.3 for the shortest configuration. Now, that is definitely not the first modular suppressor on the market, but it is certainly a cool take on things. It kind of reminds me a lot of the Erector from Q with some fancier designs on the outside, or more accurately, the Dead Air Odessa 9, which only weighs 10.1 ounces and is a quarter inch longer. Personally, I'm not sure I would have a lot of use for that amount of adjustment in a suppressor. I'm more of a all or nothing kind of guy when it comes to that. I don't like like 80 different ways to adjust it. I don't need all that. MSRP is listed at 925. I wanna know what you guys are thinking here. Do you like having this huge amount of flexibility to tune for your setup in a suppressor? Or do you care about suppressors to begin with? Sound off in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. It's time once again for more rapid fire news. We've got a bunch more to cover and not enough time to cover it, so here we go. Trigger Tech, a brand most known for super high quality drop-in triggers, has announced a few new variations of that concept for pistol caliber carbines. They are now making them for the SIG MPX, the AR9 platform, and the lesser used FX9 platform. Each of these has their own additions and tweaks designed specifically for that model that it will live in. MSRP is 250 bucks for the adjustable version and 225 for the fixed three and a half pound option. Also in new product news is a rifle from CZ USA called the 557 Eclipse. Basically, this is a more affordable version of the 557. It comes in 308, 65 Creedmoor, or 30 6 with 20.5 inch barrels. Of those, the 6.5 Creedmoor version actually comes with a 5 8 by 24 threaded muzzle. 
The stock is a synthetic setup and yada, yada, yada. The rest is pretty basic. Pricing lands at 659 MSRP. Another new one coming our way is from Kimber. It's called the Rapide Black Ice, and it's part of the Micro 9 lineup. The real key here is that the styling is also functional. Serrations on the slide, texture all around the grip, and some other trinkets like a flared magwell, extended mag, True Glow TFX tritium fiber optic sights, and a DLC coated barrel. The barrel length is just a hair over three inches long, and the extended mags hold seven rounds. Pricing on that is 883 MSRP. And it's once again time for Gundustry news. First up, Iwa or IWA Outdoor Classics, the European version of SHOT Show has been canceled. The interesting part of that, the show is scheduled for March of next year. This says a lot about how Europe is feeling about COVID right now and could indicate things to come here in the US. Also in Europe adjacent news, Zenith Firearms has announced that they are no longer going to be importing MKE firearms. The story is a bit more juicy than a normal split, though. The press release on their website goes through all kinds of monetary troubles and lawsuits to Walmart screwing them over to the Turkish government dealing with a coup. It's kind of crazy, actually. There's like bribery and all kinds. It's like a, a novel almost. All that to say they will be switching to U.S. made firearms that they will be launching next year or so they say. No telling what they will end up being at this point. They haven't really indicated that. Maybe more roller locks. That's not ever a bad thing, right? And rounding out our industry news, the big blue Smith & Wesson has released their second quarter 2021 earnings, and boy, oh boy, it's a whopper. Ace Ventura, pet detective, and you must be the Monopoly guy. Quarterly sales were $248.7 million, Compare that to 2019, which during the same time was 113.7 million, a difference of 135 million or an increase of 118.7%. That is absolutely nuts. Holy crap. We all know why. Things are crazy in the gun industry right now. Wow. GunTuber of the Week continues this week. For anyone new here, GunTuber of the Week is a segment where I share a gun-related channel that, by our standards, which are admittedly high, puts out high-quality, entertaining, informative content on a regular basis. That is the key to getting selected for this. And speaking of that, our GunTuber of the Week this time is Work the Trigger. His channel is all about having a good time and learning along the way. He does reviews as well as some competition shooting and aims to get it? Bring value to his viewers the entire time. Here's a quick clip. Hey guys, it's work and it's the first Saturday of the month, which means it is yet another glorious USPSA match day. If you're into that type of content, and I bet a lot of you are, go find the link to his channel in the description or in the comments or wherever and get subscribed and be sure to tell him TGC sent you. TA Targets offers some of the most innovative and robust target systems money can buy. Featuring AR550 steel and forward-thinking build quality, these targets are built to last. Whether you're blasting every day or plinking on the weekends, TA Targets has something for everyone. To get 10% off your entire order, head over to tatargets.com and use our code TGC10. It's now time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys. That's right, you guys, double pointing. <laughs> this time our questions are coming from the TGC Facebook page. Our first question is from Scott Strohmeyer, and he says, with SHOT being canceled, what are manufacturers doing to show off their products? To put it lightly, <laughs> they are scrambling to figure out what the best moves are gonna be for them. Smart ones will contact me and let TGC help them. Wink. <laughs> Aubrey Wright says, what is the best base level AR lower that you can't go wrong with to start a build? 
that depends on your budget. On the cheap end, Anderson is there, but might need a little massaging to get it right. I bought like 10 of them all at once, and some of them needed a couple tweaks, little refinement here and there. And then you move up to more expensive stuff like Aero Precision, and it sort of explodes from there. There's so many options. There's, they're just plentiful. So I can't really pinpoint it to one, but there's plenty of good brands out there. Scott Brendel says, what are the chances of the Supreme Court overruling assault weapons bans? Well, that would require the case to reach the Supreme Court. And then the Supreme Court actually having the balls to hear the case. It's unlikely, if you ask me. I don't think SCOTUS has the balls to take gun cases these days. I think they just avoid it. Chris Ramirez says, how can new gun owners still get enough training if money is an issue? Well, you could look at online training from places like Warrior Poet Society Network. They've got a lot of that going on. And there are other options like dry fire systems such as Laser X or Mantis X. But I'll be clear on this. There is no replacement for firing live rounds downrange. Sorry, it sucks, but that's the truth. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. Where did you acquire most of your gun knowledge? Was it online, maybe a forum, maybe videos, or was it from other people? Maybe at a gun club or a gun show or your friends or something like that. Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to theguncollective.com. I'd love it if you did that and send it our way. After you click the like button, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link. 50K guys, 50K on that. Hit that link in the description. That would be a massive help for us. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.